I did was um, basically looked on the internet and um, found about found out about um, Peter Vogler. Um, I knew I, I wanted to get really uh, good, experienced snow sculptors. Yeah. Well, Peter Vogler, um, he is uh, the Olympic champion, um, and he is from British Columbia. Um, there's also uh, Tony Destratus. He's a local chef um, at the Lake George Club and, and an ice sculptor, an experienced ice sculptor. There's um, Jerry Merrill. He's also um, a U.S. champion ice sculptor. Uh, you know, he's from Western New York, and um, myself, I'm a wood, snow, and ice sculptor, and um, I live in Queensbury, <laughs> and my business is um, Glen Tree Art, um, and then there's also um, Rick and Judy Pratt, and they're from the Rochester area, and they're mainly wood sculptors. Well, we've, we've worked on pieces at a festival in Prince Edward Island that were sure. 25 feet tall and 80 feet wide. But, you know, it's a team effort. And like a, one was a pirate in front of a, a sailing ship and it was like a life-size sailing ship carved out of snow. Um, and we've done numerous castles. That's kind of uh, standard, I guess. Uh, but some of my favorite pieces are ones we've done in very short time periods at contests and um, manage to kind of push limits and wow people. I, I like wow people all the time, yeah. Uh, 24 years ago, I, I heard about a snow sculpting contest in, in our province and uh, with a chance, the prize was a trip to Quebec City. And never having been to Quebec, I thought that was an attractive thing to aim at. And I didn't know it was gonna lead into a career. And since now I've carved in uh, 18 different countries. And, including uh, the Olympics in Italy in 2006. Festivals hire my, my company and we, we bring you know, a team of sculptors and create ice slides, um, big murals, sculptures, whatever, whatever people want, we can make out of snow and ice. The problem is, isn't so much the coldest when we run into those warm days when things start melting. And we've, we've actually, uh, this, this weather we've had here this week is phenomenal, it's great. Like a lot of people think it's too cold, but I love it. Well, first of all, you can see that it's, okay, the piece is called um, The King of Winter. And I wanted to emphasize sort of the frostiness and have those spiky hair and sp spiky beard. And he's holding a big snowflake. And, um, but if you also notice, it's much taller than the eight foot block that we started with. So what we had done, as we were taking away the snow we didn't need for the sculpture, we stacked it on top to make it taller, and then we cut other pieces into points to make all those uh, spikes in the hair. So we've been adding and adding, which is kind of opposite of some of the other sculptures that are here, where they just carve into the block and remove snow, like a stone sculpture. Yes. It's a deeply meaningless meditation. <laughs> you meet lots of interesting people. Everybody here that's part of this thing has been fun to chat with and interesting, and a lot of them do things like run restaurants and car vice and things that I don't know anything about. So that's part of it. Um, on the international events, they pay for food and lodging while you're there. So you get to see parts of the world for airfare. We stayed in Switzerland in a four-star hotel that cost $4,800 a week just to sleep. And we stayed there for nothing and for carbon snow. Basically, work for your supper. So any place where there's snow in the northern latitudes, I've tried it once. And I think the town village of uh, Lake George did that, the workers. But they make a form out of wood, they pour the snow in and they pack it down, they actually stomp it down, beat it down with their feet. And that's what makes it consistent throughout. And they did a great job on these blocks. And then they take the form away, we did that Tuesday night, took the wood away. So a lot, of, a lot of the goodness of a sculpture comes from how well the guys did in building the block and stomping the snow and you know, you have to give them credit for half of the artwork. Right. So I draw a picture and then grid it, grid my drawing, and then grid the block and that keeps the proportions. So you can see the elephants are a foot and a half off the ground 
But if we'd made the elephant's legs go clear to the ground, they wouldn't look like elephants anymore. They'd look like half giraffe and elephant or something. So, so I draw a picture, grid the picture, and then snap chalk lines on the block, mark the points where you want to go in and start carving. Once you've got you know, 10 minutes of that done, you've got the big spots. Yeah, we're starting a rumor that there's a, an octopus in Lake George here, and <laughs> he's protecting the boat. So this, this is, is our first time. <laughs> this is our first sculpture in snow. We're um, chainsaw artists by trade. Uh, we carve wood, and we've done ice carvings before, but this is the first opportunity we've had to sculpt snow. So, and it's, it's been fun. It's fun, yeah. yeah. And the snow's really soft, and actually it's pretty forgiving that if you make a mistake, you can kind of take snow and put some water in it and throw it back on there. So that's pretty fun to do. It's a little over eight feet. We added just a little bit on the top of the head of the octopus. And um, I don't know how long it is. It's probably... We almost came out of well, It's about 16 feet, maybe. Long. Yeah. So we had to cut it into squares, and then we added this whole bolt on in sections like igloo building so that was fun and really heavy so we constructed and then we carved